Hello everybody, Easy here. In today's video, we will be going over how to install Batocera on your Retroid Pocket 5, Retroid Pocket Mini, or Retroid Pocket Flip 2. Batocera is a lightweight, portable Linux installation that acts as an easy-to-use platform for organizing and running your games and emulators. Because it's portable, Batocera will not overwrite your Android install and can be reverted at any time. On top of this, you get to utilize some more Linux functionality through the Retroid with this, including overclocking capabilities and ports. Without any delay, let's get right into this guide. To begin, you will need a Retroid Pocket 5 or Mini, or a Flip 2. It has been confirmed to me by Retroid team members that this will work on the Flip 2 once the image is released. An external PC with Windows or Linux capable of writing images. For this video, we will be using Belina Etcher, which is available on both Windows and Linux. An SD card with a good amount of storage. For this test, I use 64 gigabytes, and it is a bit small, but it works. You will also need a way to read this SD card, such as an adapter. To begin, we are going to download the Batocera image for our device from the repository in the description. Make sure you select the correct image for your correct device. We are going to select the latest image for our device and select the .gz archive. Once it's downloaded, we can extract the image file from within the arc. This is not necessary, but it does make the process easier. In this tutorial, it will be suggested to remove any excess drives from your PC when flashing, so keep in mind where you store your image. In my case, I will be storing it on an internal drive. It's now suggested to remove excess drives now, and plug in your micro SD to flash. We are going to run the Bolina Etcher setup, and after the automatic setup completes, the program itself will run. This program will allow us to write an image to an SD card, in this case, the Batocera image. Bolina Etcher is available on both Windows and Linux. In this video, we will be using Windows. Make sure you select the correct drive to install to. Etcher will format a drive when flashing, deleting all of the data on it. This is why it's suggested to remove excess drives. Select Flash from a file and go to the downloaded Batocera image. I want to stress once again that you should be using the correct image for your correct device. Once the image and your correct drive for the micro SD are selected, click Flash. Once this is completed, we can eject and safely remove the micro SD containing our image. We can now insert this into the Retroid Pocket 5. We are now going to enter the bootloader. To do this, while in Android mode, while the Retroid Pocket 5 is on, hold the volume down key and restart the device, holding the key until you see the bootloader. To control the bootloader, you will use the volume keys to scroll and power to select an option. Once we are in the bootloader, we can select Change Loader and change it from Android to Loader. It will now restart our system back to bootloader with Loader selected instead. We can now select Boot and run Batocera for the first time. This may take a moment to load, but it will launch Batocera for the first time and you may experience some music. You can go ahead and turn that down if you would like. Once booted, we are going to go to Settings, so we will press Start to bring up the Settings menu. The very first one we will select is to mute the front end music. Remember, by default, B is Select and A is Back. Scroll down to Sound Settings and toggle Front End Music to Off. The next setting we will adjust is for connecting to the internet. This will be important for local network file transfers, as normal Windows 10 and 11 PCs cannot read a Batocera drive. If you use a Linux distribution, you should be able to read it locally off your machine. To connect to the internet, go down to Network Settings, 
toggle Enable Wi-Fi to On. Then select your network name from Wi-Fi SSID. Enter your password under Wi-Fi key. Once connected, you will be able to share any files with a Windows device connected to the same network. To connect to Batocera through local network sharing, enter slash slash Batocera slash share in your Windows File Explorer address bar, or go to Network Locations. If you are on Linux, you can manually read the SD card on your system. Batocera automatically comes with all emulators available and all presets pre-configured, so all we have to do is drag and drop our games into the ROMs folder and its subfolders on the micro SD. Once we have done that, reboot the device to rescan libraries, and you will see your games appear in their respective libraries. Some platforms such as PC Engine, Pygame, or DOS may need some more tweaking and that is beyond the scope of this video. Ports will also need tweaking. All of these can be completed with SSH. If you wish to know more about Batocera in SSH, I will leave a link to its wiki article in the description. If you wish to add movies and music to your Kodi library, we can also open that subfolder from the root folder now. I know this desktop environment is supposed to be better, but you know what they say. Before we finish setup, there's a couple more settings we should look at. First, to gather thumbnails and box arts for your game, we are going to use the scraper tool. To do this, go to setting with start and go down to scraper. Select the source you wish to scrape from and hit scrape. This could take a while depending on your library size, SD card speed, and server speeds. Once finished, you can close out of the scraper settings. It should be noted, some libraries require logging in with a third-party account, while others do not. For this tutorial, we will skip the login process. Finally, if you wish to adjust controls, open Settings, select Controller Mapping, and follow the on-screen prompts carefully on the buttons you wish to assign. Some tips to remember, when in game, you can press the upper right and bottom left optional face buttons to return to home menu at any time. The hotkey and south face button will bring up RetroArch's in-game menu. Battery drain may be high while doing wireless transfer, so be sure to double check that you don't leave any scraping or transfers on overnight. You can find more information at any time by checking out the Bato Sarah Discord along with the Retroid Pocket Discord. These will be the best locations for resources and further setup guides, along with updates to Bato Sarah in the Retroid Pocket 5. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my channel for more handheld content. What was your favorite part of the video? Be sure to share with others you think are interested, and subscribe for more. Thanks again to the Bato Sarah staff for helping out with this. Take care and enjoy your games.